That was Christopher. Uh, he's got a lot of noise, so I had to mute him. Okay, we've got about 25 people on now, 26, and the recording's on. Okay, to get that other new. <laughs> yes, it, it, I uploaded new it right order away. Posted yet? I uploaded it right away to the Yahoo site. That email went out, and I also posted it on the uh, chat group. Okay. And I announced it here. I came on. Okay. The money order that I had Tom post today is a money order that we make as a bailment to uh, the IRS out in Ogden, Utah. Okay. The one that goes to the uh, foreign country and U dot S dot possession IRS. Because U dot S dot possession is United States, the United States of America possession. And that's what you are. Okay? You are part of the possession of the protection a protected possession of the United States of America. The other two places to where you would send a 1041V out is going to go to the Department of the Treasury, which is the corporate IRS Treasury. Okay? There are two IRSs in this country, one for the corporation, and that is for the Department of the Treasury. The other IRS is the basically the replacement for the customs coming into the nation. They're the, they're the old customs agents, okay? And basically all tariff our all income tax is a tariff tax or a customs tax. So we go to the protection and see all income tax really has to go back to the nation or to the protected uh, principal residents of the nation. Okay. So I don't want to hear any bullshit out of any of these other uh, mm-hmm. items that are out here trying to say that they know what the hell's going on, okay? <laughs> I haven't heard one stinking honest word out of them, and basically they have never put any damn money orders or anything like that out of, for the people to use until these guys start proving that they have something that works and offering it out here to the American public people, the real Americans, then they can take their shit and shove it where the shit don't shine. I'm fed up with listening to all this garbage. Okay? We're not dead, so we're not in probate. We're not in any of this other garbage out here. Okay? All we have to do is we have to do our money orders and put them in as bailment into a protected depository. And that's what this uh, IRS uh, Treasury depository is out there in Ogden, Utah. When we send our stuff out to them, we can deposit it into the protected depository. Then we can do a withdrawal using the 1099A and a money order because we're the bailor. And basically the Secretary of the Treasury is the head bailee over the Treasury Department. And that's the department that we're working with, not the Department of the Treasury. And you need to get your address correct. Mine is Sydney, Iowa. U dot S dot possession outside the federal zone in brackets the zip code. That is the presumption that they're operating on. 
is that you are a possession of the U.S. corporation. You have to say, no, I'm a possession of the United States of America. And then uh, we can do, like I said, I'm working on the money order for the 1099-A's. That would be a withdrawal to to be directed to us. You want to buy something or do a set-off with a utility or whatever, uh, you would do a 1099-C and a money order in that process. So I'll I'll make a money special money order up for the 1099C because you guys don't seem to know how to do a damn thing. You need to have somebody else do everything for you. The other one will be we will do a 1099 OID for everything we draw out of our bailment that we put out here. Because uh with the OID that will be of a conversion into the postal monetary system. Okay, so now we've covered the 1099A, the 1099C, and the 1099 OID. What were we missing? Well, we were missing the 1099B, and that is basically most of your state licenses, your certificates uh, of title to your property being held by the corporation. They're securities. So we need to do a 1099B, a money order against them, and uh, release those uh, securities and order the money back from those. If the state insurance or the state security uh, department will not settle them or the uh, court with their bar bank authorized or broker authorized uh, representative uh, licenses can't handle it. We will go to the Securities and Exchange Commission that was put into place in 1934 to handle this stuff with the states. Take the time, read this over, understand. Go into the dictionary, Anderson's Law Dictionary and read what it says about possession with an open mind, okay? Also, read what it says about uh, deposit in Anderson's, and that's where you'll find about bailment and about Baylor and Bailey. Victoria Joy was on the right target about the Bailey Baylor. Okay? <coughs> But she didn't hang around long enough to see it through. I'm sorry to say. She was, a, in my opinion, a good woman. Now, the Social Security number is nothing but a routing number. Okay? You have a passbook savings account number. And we will have that utilized in when we deposit this into the Treasury, the IRS Treasury Department Depository. That will be our pass book savings number, account number. And that you have at your initial passport. Basically, that is your. The nine digits on that passport number will be that account number. You utilize that in the process as uh, for the uh, American uh, or the bailment account number. But it's a non-interest when you place this into bailment with the Treasury Department it is in a non-interest-bearing savings or protected account. Nobody can touch it except you as the bailor. Okay? 
Now, from what I said the other night and what I put together here uh, and what I've been talking about, I don't want to hear shit about anything else out there. Because it doesn't fit with what I'm talking about. I could care less what the hell these other people are talking about until they prove me wrong. Okay? I put this group site together for what I was working on. Not to have all this other garbage come back into the system again from all these other different sources. They want to use my stuff? I don't care. I never copyrighted any of my stuff like some of these people out here do. David Wynn Miller. Yeah. And then basically charge people for the damn information. If he knew what the hell he was doing, he wouldn't be charging anybody because he'd have access to his own damn account. He wouldn't need to be charging anybody. He should be giving it away free. He charges $3,000. If he loved his neighbor, basically, is what the Bible says. <clears throat> so, that's about all I've got to say for tonight. But you can ask some questions if you want. You stop it. So on the back of your uh, this new money order, the, as you had the passbook account, and before that, that's the Social Security as a routing number then, right? On what now? On the back of the uh, revised money order. U.S. Treasury depository be held on deposit in the, uh, is that the Social no. Security number? No. You put your name, held on deposit, in your name all capital, whatever is on your passport. Okay. Passport name. And then the other, the passbook account number is basically your passport number. Okay. Clear. That expired passport is your passbook for your savings account or your deposit, your bailment account. You make an entry or a deposit in that book. Then you can do a withdrawal on the other side to where it says departure. Mm. It's got it right there set up for you. You just have to make the entries. And then you request, like on the back of this money order that I have, we're going to request a complete account balance. And basically, as the bailor, you can do that. But see, people weren't standing in the right light out here, and they weren't dealing with the right place. When you're dealing with the corporate side, they can give you all the shit they want. Or they give you no shit at all. And all of their stuff is total fraud. Because all income taxes, like I said, yeah, you don't owe any income tax, but you place it out there, and then you have the superior claim to claim it back away from them. That's just like going into bankruptcy, okay? You've got $100,000 there, and you got 25 creditors. Well, two of the creditors have the highest claim of $50,000 apiece. That doesn't leave too much for the rest of the creditors after they get settled. So when you get settled, you're claiming it all back. That leaves nothing for the corporate uh, corporation to claim and they can really only claim it after three years and you've abandoned it that's what I was talking about the other night on that uh, penalty they get you to make a payment and then basically 
is sitting in a bailment waiting for you to come and claim it because you have the higher claim. But nobody ever goes back and claims it. So they come and claim it. And then all these secret liens that these uh, people put on our assets. They're all fraudulent. But now you can basically go in and find out how they're doing it. That's why I told people, go in and study that training module on the IRS or on the bankruptcy, the Washington, D.C. bankruptcy uh, website. See how these lawyers and everything operate in the background, placing uh, these secret liens and everything against our assets. Okay, questions? I have a question if I can ask one. Okay. Can you, okay. I'm new. I want. I'm new to the group, and I st- actually stumbled upon the information on uh, TalkShoe, and then I found my way in trying to find the group, the 1099A by Patrick Devine. So I'm grateful for being in the group, and I'm so grateful for this information. Um, I need to understand exactly how I am to um, fill out this money order because I'm a doer. I will follow your instructions. I will hear and listen and do exactly how you tell me to do it because I I trust your information. Okay. What you need to do is basically go through the audios that I've put up there for about the last couple weeks to get caught up. Okay. Okay. Tom can tell you the links on those, uh, where those audios are. So go ahead and tell her, Tom. You, have you joined the Yahoo group? Yes, sir. I joined the Yahoo group a couple of and, days ago. Okay, then. So you should have gotten the welcome email when you joined, and the welcome email was also sent out uh, around 1 o'clock this afternoon. In, yes, in I that, did receive that. In the, and that welcome e- email shows you where the links are to the calls on the Yahoo site. And then we have a backup site where it's much easier to download the calls if you want. And th- there have been a, a, quite a few calls. I think there were f- uh, four calls last week and three calls the week before. And okay. uh, but re- uh, I, th- I suggest reviewing the document in the last folder, Passport Banking. Uh, okay. Reviewing all, all those documents, though the latest ones are the most applicable Reviewing the earlier documents gives you an idea of the history of the changes and some of the thinking. So okay. go, go, go through the documents, and then once you have some familiarity with the documents, listen to the calls. And I okay. Set it up. And it would probably be good to listen to the calls backwards. Okay. So Meaning you'll understand, last some one it, you'll understand some of it, and then there's some, some of the, uh, you know, do the last call first. Okay, last call first. And okay. Now, question. Right. Question. Pardon? Do you have a, a state EIN or a foreign grant or trust EIN? Um, I have not an EIN. I have a, a, for a corporation that I created, I have an EIN. Not for myself. No, sir, I don't. Okay, Other than my social need, security number. You need, you need to go in and try and get an estate EIN but preferably get a foreign grant or trust EIN because when okay. you go to, uh, and that's t- w- when you do the 1041, uh, moving your money off your ship, your citizen ship onto okay. land. Okay. And you're mm-hmm. placing it on a land depository in the treasury department. You need to have, uh, on the 1041, you're going to be usually utilizing the EIN number, the Foreign Grant or Trust EIN, for your okay. bailment. Okay. 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 So that's what you're going to be uh, placing that uh, bailment under is your Foreign Grant or Trust EIN, 
And then that's what you will use on your money orders when you draw out of that uh, uh, savings, bailment savings account. Okay. Okay. So how do I get the um, estate foreign uh, grants or EIN number? I have to get SS4, that through. SS4 okay. form, and basically uh, it's on the site there, and you can talk to the people on the group site. Put your questions to the group site. Okay. I told the people okay. on the group site that basically uh, they're supposed to start helping other people here. Okay? Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Much okay. gratitude. Yes, and that's that's true. The people on the Skype group, which we're talking together, they should be looking at the group site also, and people are asking questions. They should jump in and answer them too, just not me. Okay. Can I ask one more question just before? Yeah, go ahead. I, um, I was listening to an old um, show on TalkShoe, and it was mentioning about Form 1455 and Form 1071. Can you forget tell me those, about for, Forget those. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. This yes, is too simple. You. for this. We don't need all those other forms. Most of those forms are just for the corporations. Okay. Got you. And that's why we're doing our – I'm making up my own money orders, and these money orders are no different than a check in your checkbook okay. when you look at it. You've got a routing number, and you've got an account number. You just have to determine which routing number you're going to be utilizing. When you draw it off your boat, okay, your citizenship, the routing, the treasury routing number is your social security number. It's not, it does not hold any money. It just routes the money to Ah. where it needs to go. That's why they say the Social Security has no money. It doesn't. That makes sense. Okay? That makes a lot of sense, yes. Yes, it's so, all being held in other accounts, either in a passbook savings account that you may have if you've gotten your passport, or basically it's all in an account that you haven't claimed yet. I don't have but a see, passport. See, that's why you need so to have a passport. You have to claim your passbook savings account, which... Mm-hmm is also tied to the number on your back of your Social Security card. Okay. Now, you know what? You just you just touched on something because I, I went in and I ordered a new Social Security card because I heard after 1996 when it was into a new uh, – when the bankruptcy was up, they moved everything to other banks or whatever. So I ordered me a new Social Security card because I wanted to see if the letter on the back of my Social Security card would change – versus what I had already had in my possession. I ordered a replacement card, and when it came, there was a new, uh, it was letter G to another Federal Reserve Bank with the numbers on the back. No, it's not going to another Federal Reserve Bank, okay? That is your master postal routing number. Wow. Yes, and you have to apply that to uh, Appendix 1, Okay, the operating procedures with the uh, Federal Reserve Bank, you take that number, that is your master you take routing that. number. Okay? That number, that is your master routing number. Okay. I muted that. Okay. Hey, um, uh, Patrick, okay. maybe now, you can join you gotta the... Listen. Uh, you got to listen. Okay? You can join the Skype group. I'm listening. I'm listening. Okay. Uh... That is your master EIN number, or your ma- yeah, your master EIN routing number for operating in the postal world. Now, mm. to operate in the postal world, you have to pay the boatsman to go to hell and back, because yes. we're operating in this postal world, and that is hell. Yes. Okay. okay? We're supposed mm-hmm. to be operating out here in the du jour world, which is heaven. So okay. they've got us. We have to go over to hell and come back. Wow. So you okay. have, and all the Greek mythology and Roman mythology to where you had to pay the boatsman to go to Hades or whatever. Mm-hmm. You have to pay to get a passport. 
Okay, so that means I have to go. I don't have a passport, so I need to go to the post office and, and get me a passport? Yes, and that basically I'm trying to show you that there is a way that you can get some money right now, okay? But, yes, sir. Uh, the calls will explain that to you, too. Yeah, okay. I think I okay. went over that uh, last uh, the call the night before or something, okay? Uh, but right. okay. with this money order today and, and getting an understanding, try and go over this, read this over, get an understanding of it, and uh, then basically you might have uh, a little more understanding to where you can ask the right questions, I guess, is what I'm coming up with. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Next. Hello, Patrick. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to ask you, you said uh, the FS is, uh, oh, I'm sorry, this is Marvin, I'll leave him. Uh, you said the Social Security number is the route number, okay? Um, and so which one is happening to be the transit number? Is it the... You, uh, you got to speak, you got to speak into the phone and speak a little louder. <laughs> Okay, okay. Yeah. How about that? Is that okay? That's better. Okay, thank you. Uh, so you said the SS is the routing number. So the the postal uh, for the transit number, I, I remember you saying that this that's also a nine-digit number. Would that happen to be the transit number? That is the treasury routing number, okay? Okay, okay, because I'm writing this down. To go and process to route the assets off of your ship onto land. Okay. 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 That's uh-huh. what the Social Security number is. You're going okay. to heaven. So you're coming off the ship and you're going to go to heaven. You're going okay. to the land of milk and honey. Okay? Okay. Okay. You're, and, you're and a newbie then? coming into this country. And basically you're hitting a... Uh, 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 what the hell damn island is that? Uh, Ellis Island. And basically, yeah. you're coming here, and you're going to, this is the land of milk and honey. So you're coming off the ship. You're yes. debarking your yes. money off the ship. Yes. Well, well I, I remember some time ago, I asked you a question about uh, combining the numbers together with uh, the 98EIN and uh, the, the estate EIN. And now, now, the only problems I was having was because uh, when you look at a check, you see the route number, and then you see the transit number, right? And I was trying to figure out. Now, I, I figured out. Well, they're the, both uh, pretty the much the same. The... Oh. Yeah. The routing number Wait is basically a, a transit number, basically saying okay. that this is uh, uh, the number that uh, basically is uh, – the route that that train is taking. Okay, okay. So, so, and then I was because I was going to call you in private, uh, you know, discuss something before I throw it out at this, before you throw it out at the group, because uh, I was looking how checks are made and the codings that's in them and what they what they actually talking about. And, and I found something curious with the Federal Reserve how they have all their so-called business numbers, which is also their transit numbers to these different 12 banks and how they use their numbers. And I'm like, wait a minute. I said, I have to ask you this because you may know about it. So I'm thinking if I use that number for the Federal Reserve as the transit number and then the EIN or the 98 but, EIN but see, as the account yeah, But number. see, you're not going to use the Federal Reserve Bank routing numbers. Okay. 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 When you when you do take the number off the back of your social security card, okay. and you do the appendix one, okay. Okay. You put down that number on uh, when you fill out appendix one, which is for your master file, okay. Okay. And the master file number routing number is that number. Okay. Why you That's have you. to fill out appendix one is because you have to get a signature card on file for your account. Right. 
Right. You have to sign on. Say, this is my ship or my railroad. Okay? Now, you yeah. have your master account, and then you can have sub train routes mm-hmm. with your 98 series foreign grant or trust routing number or your estate EIN routing number. And those you right. would do with an Appendix B, and they you'd have to do an Appendix B for each one of them, mm-hmm. and that goes into Section 3 of Appendix B, but you have to fill out Section 1, 2, and 3, and then you have to have a signature card to go along with that, attaching it back to the master file, which is Section 4 on that Appendix B. Okay. It's Attachment B. Okay. Okay, I got it. I got it. I got it written down. Okay. And then, see, right. it's no different than a check at the bank. The check, the bank's number is mm-hmm. the routing number. Your account number is in that bank. So now the check goes out, and it will be routed back to that bank and to your account. Great. Great. Can you repeat that last part? You broke up now, a little bit. Now, let me ask, is there any other damn stinking guru out there that knows any of this shit? Uh, I haven't heard anybody say anything about it. Plus, yeah. I don't like how they have nope. secrets. I don't think so. You know, that's one I thing I don't like. Nothing. You know, but yet they have all the answers. Uh, they can no, tell they you don't. all the answers, and they'll charge you for all those answers. Yeah, that's right. That's right, and and I was thinking because months ago you said something, and I noticed uh, certain things that the group was doing, and I was like, wait a minute, yeah. you know, you giving out the information clearly, but everyone else want to have a form of secrecy, and I'm like, wait a minute, that's what the government doing is secrecy, the court system is secrecy, the lawyers are secrecy, the, a lot of these gurus are secrecy. How are they helping anybody? They're not helping anyone. But yeah. the reason why I've been with you for so long is because you're telling it. Why? Yeah. And like you said, once you get your things, you know, uh, keep your mouth shut. Loose lips, sink ships. And, you know, just just get out the way. Just do what you have to do. Help everybody in the group and do what you got to do and just, you know, get out the way. But all this secrecy, I'm like, how how's these guys going to help? Like yeah. what you're talking about. Okay, any other questions? Looks like not. Any questions? How about, how about discussing the 1041, Patrick? Uh huh? Discussing the 1041. What about it? Uh, well, I was I was looking at it because you posted it, and you know, like, uh, do you fill that out or? Yeah, you got to fill that out. Put your address and everything down, saying where it's coming from. But like I said, okay. on the address, right after your state, you put a comma, and then you say. U dot S dot possession. Now the Secret Service has to protect you. Now the U.S. Marshals have to protect you. Now the U.S. Marines have to protect you because you are now part of the United States of America, not the corporation United States. Oh, that's, that's great. That's great. That's great. Can you put that as your, look, uh, was, on any of your mail? Was, on all of your uh, mail? Can you put that on all of your mail? Can you put that on what? All your mailings. Yes, I would. Start breaking the presumption that they're operating out here with. Hey, Pat Patrick, uh, Chris from the UK. Is, is having trouble. He's on the call, but he can't uh, answer questions because it's distorted, and he wants me to ask this. If there are all these different hidden ways of offsetting and discharging debt, this means that to bring us, the U.S. of A, back to its root and do away 
with the U.S. corporation, then there is a tremendous amount of interlocking systems, wrong word, but it comes close, that have to be sorted out and undone. Is that right? Not all that many, okay? Just your your securities, and basically, like this one bankruptcy judge told a couple guys, you can do this all yourself, okay? If you've got a driver's license, if you've got a certificate of title, it's a security, okay? Now, if it's a security, it's being traded on the big board somewhere. You could probably take that to a security broker. Or you could take it to the Securities and Exchange Commission. Or you could take it to the state uh, one that wrote the damn thing, which is the state insurance department, and basically give them a 1099-B and a money order and order them to... uh, Close that account down. That's the 1099B process. Mm. We were supposed to learn our ABCs. The A's are for acquisition. But the bankers and everything and the lawyers and the judges and everything use it as an abandonment when we walk away and leave it sitting on the table after three years. That's the form that they use. The same form that we would use to uh, get an acquisition from our bailment. We're the bailor. And basically the Treasury Department is just the bailee holding our assets in a protected situation. But we've got to get them off the ship and put them in the protected area. So it is protected from the corporations. While it's on the ship, we're still vulnerable, and basically that ship could sink at any time. So you want your assets off the ship and onto the land. Then if you ever need the ship and it's still afloat, then you can go get on board. Use it for your vacation. Okay? Think outside the box on some of this stuff. Think realistically, in real terms. A lot of this stuff has been in the movies. If you have ever watched any movies, like the Pirates of the Caribbean and some of these other things. (coughs) And as far as Admiralty... Basically, one of the guys went in and basically said, yeah, Admiralty goes all the way back to the beginning with Adam and Eve. That's where your foundation of Admiralty is. Adam and Eve. Admiralty. Of being the owners of the land. Not corporate owners, but living owners. Your certificate of live birth, and a lot of people have that totally messed up. It says certificate of live birth. That is your American citizenship registration document. And like I said before, all ships have to be registered with the Treasury Department. But you have a U.S. citizenship, and it's registered with the Department of the Treasury. Because it's in the corporate world. And that's where the Department of the Treasury and all the Department of the Treasury IRS bills and everything are coming out of the corporate side. There are two IRSs out here. So anybody who says different, they're wrong. Okay. 
questions. Gotcha. The um the ten ninety nine A's, B's and C's that we did last year or some months ago, do they still apply to this process today? No. No, we're gonna have to basically uh some of the stuff we've done in the past, we haven't gotten any response back from them, so uh, we're not going to sit around and wait uh, to see if something's going to happen. No, we're going to move forward. We're going to make it happen, okay? That's what we're supposed to do is make things happen, not sit and wait and hope that somebody's going to change the government and basically come and hand everything back out to the people. That's a crock of bullshit, too. Like all these people sitting around waiting to go to heaven. Hell, heaven's right here on earth. You better start realizing that. Your heaven is what you make of it. And hell's right here on earth too. But that's the problem. Most people are sitting over in hell. Okay. No more okay. questions? Mark wants to ask a question, but he's got to mute himself back in. I, I muted okay. you out, Mark, because there was a lot of noise you were making. So go star six to come back in. Oh, I'll on, though. Okay, you're still muted, Mark. Okay. Yeah, hey, Patrick, I had a question for you. Yeah. Um, ever since you've been talking about these movies and, and, and you know paying attention to what they're saying between you and Jack Smith, uh, I've been doing that, and I've been getting a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of these encoded messages. But I wanted to ask you, because you mentioned uh, a couple calls ago, you were talking about Forrest Gump. Now, that movie, for me, that has a boatload of messages that I was getting out of it. I'm just curious... You mentioned you had to watch it four times. I'm curious. Six. six. Okay, six. six. <laughs> what What was it specifically that you? Uh, I mean, like I said, there's a lot of. I mean, there's a lot of things you could get from that. I'm just curious because I watch that movie a lot every time it comes on too. But um, what What was it specifically that you were talking about that you well, said? Well, the different time, time frames, the different time frames, and the situations, like with the presidents. Okay. Mm-hmm. He went and saw three different presidents during uh, the movie, okay? Mm-hmm. Kennedy, uh, Johnson, and Nixon, mm-hmm. okay? And all of them with uh, under different scenarios of when he was going to see them, okay? One was with the football player going to see Kennedy. The next was with uh, uh, Johnson as he was a war hero that got shot in the butt. And basically then he showed his ass to uh, Johnson. So basically he said, here, kiss my ass uh, in the movie. Uh, that was the significance out of that one. And then uh, he uh, playing uh, ping pong with the Chinese uh, uh, with Nixon. Okay? Okay. And basically that's when they, they opened up the borders with China. So, yeah, there's a lot of key items that were in there. And then the other stuff going on about uh, the uh, enterprise and everything else, and that he he never let uh, the corporations have control of him. He did everything on his own. Yeah. I mean, they were out at sea uh, when the hurricane hit, and they were the only one that survived. Mm-hmm. I mean, there are so many things yeah. in that movie that is just know. phenomenal. Yeah, I know. That's interesting. I didn't catch that with the president's all the next time I watch it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay.
Anything else? One more. Just one more. One more, guys. Okay, uh, uh, talking about the 1041, I'm looking up here where you have the, the mountain dollars and cents. Do you just put that in yourself? Yeah. Yeah, cause, because I well, shoot Who else is going to put it in for you? Nobody, because <laughs> I'm looking at it, and I see the employee identification number. That would be your EIN. And that no. should be. You should be filing that in under your foreign grant or trust EIN. Okay. And see, number, even the guys number. over in England, okay, some mm-hmm. of the guys over there went and got a 98 series EIN number here in this country. Okay. Well, okay. they had no problem. Okay. And okay. they can move their assets out of England and ha- bring them over here and put them on as a bailment with the uh, United States Treasury Department, okay, mm-hmm. under the 98 series number. They would send that out to Ogden, Utah, too. Wow. Their money order. <laughs> wow. Wow. So that's right. Because I was, so I was looking at it, Pat. Even where you got the the name on uh the name for the estate, that's how that's how you did it when you filed it. And then you got the fiduciary name. Uh I guess that would be That's gonna be and, like you as Mr. Uh whatever your name is, okay? Right. If, right. if you had yeah, the, if you, you had the if you had the foreign grant or trust, okay, uh-huh. you could have put uh-huh. any name down there for your foreign grant or trust you wanted to, okay? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Jack Rabbit, Excellent. Jack Rabbit uh, foreign grant or trust, if that's what you wanted to call your foreign grant or trust. Right. The the big right. sir, whatever. Right. Man, that's beautiful. That is beautiful. Because I've, I've been trying to thank you, thank you, thank you. That is beautiful. I like that. I like that a lot because that just made it real simple. Thank you, Patrick. Okay. Okay. More questions? Yeah, I got a question. This is not to Patrick. This is just to, to anybody that knows how I can get the uh, company's EIN numbers without having to uh, set up some kind of payment account to, to access the, uh, the the data. You basically first try and you submit a W-9 to them requesting that. If they refuse, then you can, all you have to do is re- write refused on that, but give enough information about that company, where they're located and everything else when you uh, put them down. The IRS will take care of them, straighten their ass out. I got you. Thank you. Especially when you start using the American IRS customs agents. Marshall, you had a question? What's that, Tom? You had a question? No, I didn't. I just left him. Hey, um, I have a question. Okay. Um, with the money order, we do it uh, the regular way. Um, update, this is the updated money order. We um, put this recent, you know, emboss it and do the whole fingerprints and stuff and mail it to the correct place. And then when that's done, we do uh, 1099-A to claim it back? You'll do a 1099-A. You'll do a withdrawal money order and a 1099-A and send that out to uh, the uh, Ogden, Utah. Right, the regular place. So the first thing is the money order first. Send that yeah, in. You, yeah, you've got to get some funds into the right. account before you can do a withdrawal. 
Right, and the A is the withdrawal. The A would be a withdrawal directly to you, okay? Uh-huh. The C, if you wanted to buy a car, uh-huh. you would fill out the 1099C. You are the lender. They are the borrower. And then you would mark that they do not have to pay that uh, payment back to you. And right. you direct your money order uh, on the back of the money order. Uh, it will be directed to be paid to them. So right. the treasury they, they, will write the check out to them. Right. But do you um do you still have to get the VIN number and the uh, EIN for them? Well, if you're going to get a vehicle, yeah, I get the VIN number so you know yeah. what you're getting. You know, it's funny. I, I requested that, and they wouldn't give it to me. It's been a week now. I said, well, you know, I'm going to send you a VIN money number? order. Wait, wait, wait. VIN number? Yeah. You want to buy a vehicle? Uh-huh. You go down to the dealership. You look at the window sticker. The VIN number is right on the window sticker. Oh, yes, yes, yes. You have to look at it, write it down, so that, and leave before they pester you. Yeah. No. You can write that down. They're not going to run you off. Tell they want to sell the damn thing. <laughs> now, in a lot of places, you can go on to the website. You can look up that dealership. They have their new cars that they have on the lot. And basically, there is a uh, deal there that you can pull down a sticker and print it out. It's got all the information on that window sticker. I can't hear a thing. I've got to move around. Okay. I'm going to mute. That was, that was Christopher's problem again. I, I turned it off. Yeah, it's uh, it's all, uh, hell, I've gone in there to quite a few different uh, local car dealerships and go through and search what, what they have on their lot. I don't have to go down and see them. I just use the computer. Let your fingers do the walking. That's what the computers are supposed to be for. Patrick? Yeah. Um, you, initially, you put the money order in, but you also put the 1041V in with that also, too, correct? Right. Now... I'm doing two of them tomorrow because I got a three hundred or thirty-five thousand dollar penalty, and basically that goes to a different uh, U.S. IRS uh, Treasury Department depository, and that one's in Kansas City for me. Okay. Okay, and that I will place thirty-five thousand dollars on bailment, and then after. I will turn around and come in and claim that back. So I did what they wanted me. I placed it in bailment. Uh, the du jour or the de facto uh, IRS put a charge in against me, so I put it in. So now that settled their notice. But they wanted me to put that in there on deposit and then Three years later, they'd come around and pick it up because I abandoned it. Well, I ain't going to do that. I'm not that stupid any longer. A couple years ago, I might have been that stupid, but today I'm not. (laughs) Wait a minute. You have to do the uh, money order with a 1099B like in... No, V is in Victor. Oh, Victor. Okay, got it. You put those two in. Those go together. To To do the penalties... They give you a bill or a notice of a bill. You put that notice of the bill in with your money order, taking the assets off of your ship and placing them on land in that depository. So basically it's not coming out of my back pocket. I'm I'm getting that smart that I ain't paying anything out of my back pocket to these guys. Okay. So that's a that's a ten forty one voucher or the ten forty? No. The 1041 voucher goes out to Ogden, Utah, or the 1040 voucher. Okay, they go to the U.S. Possession Office, and you are a U.S. a U dot S dot Possession. Okay. Well, 
but the money order goes to the treasury. It goes along with the ten forty or ten forty one V when you send it out to that office. Okay. Yeah, read the instructions, please. Okay. Yeah. That's okay. what instructions are normally there for. All right. For you to read. Yep. And it and you recommend that it's a boatload of money. Well, I did a couple calculations this morning. Normally, from what we'd heard, uh, when they initially started this up uh, back in 1933, uh, when they started uh, all the registered uh, people that had a certificate of live birth registration, they basically took the funds out of the treasury at that point in time for those people, and basically their share came out to be somewhere in the neighborhood of around six hundred and uh forty thousand dollars. Okay? So mm-hmm. that was put on uh, the initial deposit on your ship. Now, if you just happened to be born in nineteen thirty three, you were not going to be able to access that until you turn twenty one. Okay, that's when you have the right to vote. Now The only exception to that is if uh, you were a woman and got married and your husband came in and claimed that and he was over uh, the age of 21. Okay? So the husband could claim it as the dowry because that would be a woman's dowry and now she was falling under the protection of her husband. That's the way it was supposed to operate in the Old Testament, and basically the Old Testament laws are still supposed to be applicable today. Now, I did a calculation to see whether how often that would double. Well, I thought, now let's see if it's every three years, if that was to double, what would it be right now? When I'm uh, 64 or 5, I can't remember what the hell I am. Uh, Anyway, so I ran through the three-year scenario, and basically the number that I would have right now was astronomical, okay? I mean, it was up almost like quadrillions, Mm -hmm. doubling every three years. So I said, well, that's not right. Uh, So I backed up and said, okay, let's take a look at this, and even at – uh, the 21-year period, it was almost totally ridiculous. Uh, so I backed up and said, okay, we know the contracts are out there on a seven-year cycle. Okay? So let's double it every seven years. And that really came out to be more applicable. So when you turn 21, your uh, $640,000 would be sitting somewhere around five five something uh, million dollars. Now that is in uh, lawful money, but we're operating in a postal world, so really you would double that again in the postal monetary system, so you would essentially have 10 million. Now see, you were supposed to be utilizing that, drawing down from that, having your head heaven on earth scenario that most people didn't know that so because you like to operate in hell hell is more fun okay <laughs> yeah let's let's operate in total misery because that's what we want to be is we want to be miserable and we just want to be uh hateful and everything else okay and try and control everybody else but we're not going to control what basically we should have been finding out what we're supposed to be controlling. So, uh, turn around, and at uh, my age right now, uh, it would be somewhere in the neighborhood of 300 and 300 to and 80 million to uh, say close to 500 million, and then you would double that. So, yes, it could be close to a billion dollars in the postal monetary currency. 
because of the inflation and everything. I also did that with your uh, price of gold, okay, doing the same seven-year doubling scenario, and it comes almost out to exactly what the current price of gold is when you take the initial $35 and double it to what the current price is right now. So it's sort of a confirmation of, yes, that's probably what we do have in the account. Hmm. Well, those are the numbers I've heard, too, three to, three to six, so $100 million. Yeah. And then see if you had a DD-214 military service or something like that, yours is going to be more. Let's see, it started at the age of uh, somewhere from 18 on up to your present age. And then it would have been, after two years of service, then it would have been essentially doubling every seven years after that. So Plus all the dividends and all the royalty checks and everything else you get in, that is part of what's going in to make that the doubling every seven years. So we're, we're, we're going to just simply pay the penalty rather than 1099 seeing it or uh, vetoing the bill. Wait a minute. Paying what penalty? The IRS penalty. That, uh, would no, be all they said is you make the payment to Kansas City or wherever. Okay, you place the money in bailment. Okay, you do not send it to the Department of the Treasury. Right. You're sending it to, as a bailment, placing it in bailment with the bailee, which is the Secretary of the Treasury. Okay? Now, you've done what they wanted you to do. Now, you turn around and do a 1099-A and a 1099-OID, and you claim that bailment back because you have the superior claim to the corporate uh, fictional world. Because all penalties and all tariff taxes have to go back to the land. And you're the land. Okay. So you're not, you're not really paying it. You're just po- posting it and settling their claim, but they're not going to get anything out of it because you're smarter than they are. Okay, so it's a little because bit Because I just made work. you smarter. So it's a little bit extra work, but no skin off our back. No. It's a great... It's a, just a way that, to move your money around and basically uh, mess with them. You're messing with the corporation now. And they can't do a damn thing about it because you're protected by being a U.S. dot possession. Mm. And the U.S. Marshals, U.S. Marines, and all those guys have to come to the aid of America. They don't have to come to the aid of the corporations, but they do have to come to the aid of the America people when you stand up as an American people. That's why the corporations can't touch you, because their laws do not apply to the United States of America. They only apply to the ones that volunteer to get into their system under their trade agreements. And that is what you're going to expatriate away from, is their corporate trade agreements. That's the expatriation that was identified in uh, 249 uh, back in 1868, the night before uh, the 14th Amendment was put in place. It was about trade agreements. And even in Section 3 of that uh, act, it addresses the president or the principal or protected 
residence. You do not operate with a uh, general delivery. You have to have a resident address, a permanent address. Even if you go down and put your neighbors down and say, basically, I'm permanent here with him right now. Paying $10 or something like that to basically uh, be able to claim uh, a resident uh, one inch square in the back room. Hell, I remember back in uh, uh, when I was growing up, I forget which cereal it was, that basically for 10 cents you could buy a square inch up in Alaska. How many of the people ever kept that? If you had that one inch square and you got your uh, document from that, basically you have a claim for oil royalties that all the other Alaskans are getting. You got to start thinking about what you've done in your lifetime. Okay, any other questions? Anybody there? Yeah, I'm here. It doesn't look like it, Patrick, so um, maybe we can wrap up. Thank you, Patrick. Okay, go ahead and make it a call. Wrap then. Yeah, thank you very much, and uh, we've got a lot to work on tomorrow. Thank you. Okay, talk to you later. Thank you, Patrick. Bye. Bye now. Patricia, are you still on? I'm I'm here. I was gonna see if Pat was still there. <laughs> 